just now I'll discuss about the pelvic diaphragm. In this diagram, you can see this is abdominal cavity. There is abdominal cavity. This is iliac fossa. There is iliac fossa. There is this is pelvic brim. This is pelvic brim or inlet of the pelvis. And here is from from here to here, this is false pelvis. This part is false pelvis. This is also known as greater pelvis. False pelvis or greater pelvis. This is pelvic brim. From here to here, here is position of pelvic diaphragm. This is pelvic diaphragm. From pelvic brim to pelvic diaphragm, this is true pelvis or lesser pelvis. So this is false pelvis above the pelvic brim and below the pelvic brim, this is true pelvis or lesser pelvis. This part is pelvic diaphragm. This is pelvic diaphragm. Below pelvic diaphragm, this part is perineum. So this portion is perineum. This is pelvic diaphragm. This is true pelvis or lesser pelvis. This is false pelvis. This pelvic diaphragm is superiorly covered by a fascia known as pelvic fascia. And it is inferiorly covered by fascia that is known as anal fascia. And this part is Below this pelvic diaphragm, this is perineum. So, now we will discuss about the pelvic diaphragm, this part. If you cut a transverse section at this level, you will find diagram like this. This is anterior part. Here is pubic bone. This is pubic symphysis. Posteriorly, there is sacrum. This is coccyx. This is Enorectal junction. This is enopoxygeal raphe or ligament. Here is perineal body. This is perineal body. And this is vagina in case of female. And this is urethra in male and female. So these structures pierce the pelvic diaphragm. This, this, and this. Now, what is structure for this pelvic diaphragm? What are the muscle responsible for the formation of the pelvic diaphragm? Here, one muscle is present. This muscle is obturator internus muscle. This muscle is obturator internus obturator internus muscle this muscle is covered by fascia this fascia is known as obturator fascia this fascia is obturator fascia obturator fascia this is after fascia. In this diagram, here is ischial spine. This is ischial spine. This is pelvic surface of the sacrum. From middle three piece of the sacrum. This muscle arises. This muscle is Pyrifarmis. This muscle is pyrifarmis. This muscle, after arising from these three middle piece of the sacrum, 
it leaves the pelvic cavity by passing through greater sciatic foramen. Here is greater sciatic foramen. This is ischial spine. From ischial spine, one muscle takes origin that is known as ischiococcygeus. This muscle is ischiococcygeus. Ischiococcygeus. This muscle is inserted on coccygeus, coccyx, and lower or fifth segment of the sacrum. So it is inserted here. This is ischiococcygeus. Coccygeus. This is ischiococcygeus. And the muscle which takes origin from posterior half of the obturator fascia, this portion, and also some part from the ischial spine. This muscle which arises from the obturator fascia, this is obturator fascia. This obturator fascia is, looks like an arch, it is also known as a tendinous arch. This is tendinous arch. It forms tendinous arch. It also it is also known as white line. This is white line. This is white line. A tendinous arch. So another muscle of this region, that is iliococcygeus, takes origin from posterior half of this white line. And this muscle is inserted on this muscle is inserted on enocoxygeal rifle and coccyx. So this muscle is iliocoxygeus. This muscle is Iliocoxygeus. Another muscle of this region is pubococcygeus. Pubococcygeus has three parts: anterior fibers, which arise from here, pelvic surface of the pubis bone, and this part is like this. This is sphincter urethry, sorry, sphincter vagina. This is sphincter, sphincter vagina. In case of female, in case of male, it forms levator prostate, levator prostate. So this muscle is sphincter vagina in female and levator prostate in male. And that person and the part of the pubo coccygeus muscle that is this. This is pubo rectalis. This muscle is pubo rectalis. This is pubo rectalis. This is pubo rectalis. And the part from here.
Vis vasarys. Pubo coxygenous prata. It takes order from anterior half of the white line. This is anterior half of the white line. This muscle is pubo coxygenous proper. So this is pubo coxygenous. Pubo coxygenous has three parts: anterior fibers. It forms the sphincter vagina in case of female and levator prostate in case of male. Middle fibers form the pubo rectalis. This is pubo rectalis. Here is anorectal junction. It is pubo rectalis. And its posterior part, which is pubo coxygenous proper, it arises from here and inserted on the anocoxygenal refuge. Sometimes here a gap is present at the site of origin of these muscles. A gap is present. This gap is known as hiatus of the swalbin. This is known as hiatus of swalbin. Hydrus of Swalbe. This is Hydrus of Swalbe. From here, ischio rectal hernia may take space. Through this gap, pelvic viscera may herniate into ischio rectal fossa. So, this may present in some cases. Now you can see this portion is pubococcygeous. This portion is iliococcygeous and this portion is ischiococcygeous. Ischiococcygeous is also known as coccygeous. This is ischiococcygeous. It is also known as coccygeous. This iliococcygeous and pubococcygeous collectively known as levator enine. These two muscles collectively form the levator ani. So this pelvic diaphragm is formed by levator ani and coccygeous muscle. So these three muscles, iliococcygeous, ischiococcygeous, or coccygeous, and pubococcygeous, collectively forms pelvic diaphragm. This. Ilio and pubo coccygeous forms elevator ani. This is super, superiorly discovered by here is superiorly discovered by pelvic fascia and inferiorly discovered by anal fascia. So this is all about the pelvic diaphragm.